Everything bad is temporary. We just can't give up because we're going through a tough time. It is just being determined enough to keep taking those steps forward. My car is a 1949 Hudson Broham. She is powered by 454 Big Block. It is two-tone, red on red. I also have patterns on the candy and gold and silver, pinstriping and leafing. The interior, I kept it pretty much original. I drew it out myself. It's a two-tone black and red. It's actually a Mercedes carpet kit. The dash is also painted candy red with flake and is also patterned in pinstripe to match the exterior. I also kept the dash all original so that the gauges and everything uh, works. The wheels are 13-inch Zenas, and I'm rolling on 520s, premium sportways. The hydraulics are aircraft Pesco's. My favorite part about my car is the grill. She's a lowrider, she cruises low and slow, but I just like that mean look, you know? I didn't put too many accessories on the car because I felt that sometimes less is more. I have the visor, which is an accessory, the grill guards, and I have the spotlights and I have Venetian blinds in the back window. When I was building the car, I had it four-linked and C-notched so that it would lay down to the floor. When I'm cruising down the street, I want the car to look like it's floating. The car was sitting in a yard in San Isidro. A friend of mine bought the car off the gentleman that owned that yard, and then uh, my boyfriend purchased it from our friend. And then we started working on the car. Unfortunately, my boyfriend passed away and he didn't get very far with the restoration. And then I took over and I restored the car to where it's at today. I actually named her Christine after the John Carpenter movie because my boyfriend passed away. Our friend that purchased the car from the older gentleman passed away. And then the older gentleman passed away. That's why I felt that that name was fitting for the car because in the movie, the car kills off its owners. And I joke around and I tell people, I think she just doesn't like men because uh, I'm a female. I've had her for 26 years and I'm still here. <laughs> when we got together, I already had my son. When I got with him, he took me to my first lowrider show when he took me to the show and seen the cultural aspect. And I was like, oh wow, this is it. This is me. What attracted me about it was that you look at the cars and then they're all very unique in their own way. Look at the murals and some people have their loved ones that have passed away, Chicano history. It's not just the love of cars, but also the love of culture. There's no rules. You could do whatever you feel because your car is an extension of you. And I thank him a lot for him coming into my life and introducing me to that aspect. There was no turning back. I just loved it. I just loved it. I was always into cars, ever since I was a little girl. Like I played with Hot Wheels, Tonkas. I played in the dirt with cars. When I was born, um, my dad took my mom to Los Angeles so that I could be born in the United States. My mom lived in Tijuana and my dad worked in Los Angeles. As soon as I was born, went back to Tijuana. And that's how I ended up living the first seven years of my life. My mom had this huge porch in, her, in the front of her house and to the right, there was a mechanic shop. And then to the left, there was a body shop. So I would just sit there and watch the guys work on the cars. My parents owned what is called a vecindad. What that is, is a property that has several houses on it. So my mom would take care of the houses and charge the rent. And um, my dad worked in Los Angeles as a baker. That's all he did his whole life. And then he would come to visit my mom every two weeks. I have a sister that's three years older than me. She got to stay to live with my mom because she was born in Tijuana. I went to school, kindergarten, first year, and I was about to go into second grade when my aunt talked to my parents 
and convinced them to send me to live with her so that I could go to school in the United States where, because I was born here. All I remember is that they told me, oh, you're gonna go live with your tia. That's all they told me. They didn't tell me, oh, we're deciding this so you could get a better education or no, no nothing like that. They just, they bought me a little suitcase and I packed up my suitcase and I was sent to live with my tia. And uh, my tia, she wasn't a very uh, like a affectionate lady. So all I remember was crying, crying and uh, going off to, to live with my aunt. Growing up, uh, I had a lot of feelings of like abandonment. I grew up uh, with a lot of those feelings and, and a little and some resentment uh, because I was shipped off. Because I was, why was I chosen to be shipped off? I lost a, a large part of my, of my history though because I don't have any, like I don't have any of the photographs of when I was a kid. I was always wonder, why can't I just stay, you know? Why can't I just stay? When I turned 18, on my actual 18th birthday, I come in and my aunt tells me, you're 18 now, you're an adult, get your things and get out. And I was like, what? What? I go, all right. You know, so I grabbed the trash bag, threw what little belongings I had and, um, and walked out. And I was uh, what they call couch surfing. Things happen, but then blessings come along and, and people extend their hand to you. I was fortunate enough that, that uh, the parent of a friend of mine told me, no, you, you have a home here, stay here with us. And when you're homeless, you're not thinking about doing homework. So I dropped out of uh, high school my senior year, but I always knew I wanted to go back. I was actually on the streets for about a year. When I was on the streets, that's when I met the biological father of my son. There was moments where I, I didn't see a light, you know, but my personality is very determined. When I got pregnant with my son, that's really what made a turning point for me because I knew then, oh, you have to, because I wanted to provide a better life for him. When my son was two months old, that's when I went back to school. And that's when I got into the auto shop and I learned about cars. My professor, he loved me. And uh, he actually got me an interview with the Navy base in Coronado to become a mechanic. And they offered me the job. So I had to think and just make a decision. Do I wanna go to work or do I wanna go on and get an education? And I chose to go to college. What I actually do for a living is investigate child abuse. What I feel like I do is uh, stand up and defend people that can't defend themselves. These children, they can't stand up to the grown-ups that are hurting them. Actually, when I was in school, what I would do is I would see somebody who's getting picked on, I'd stand up to the bully and they would back away. And then I would look for the next person that I would see getting bullied. And I'd do the same thing all over again. That part of my personality and then all these experiences that I had growing up helped me to, to relate to the families. The most challenging part of my job is the hurt that I see. I see how cruel people can be to one another. There's been times where, where I have almost been very close to losing faith in humanity, but then there's somebody always comes along and shows me that there's good people still out there. It's natural to internalize all those things that you're seeing. And that's why I think the low riding, the cruising my car is so therapeutic for me. I feel very fortunate that I have this, this passion for cars, this passion for low riding. It really takes me away. I'm a civil servant. I love what I do. And I will continue to do whatever I can to help others, you know, because that's just in my nature to to want to help. I feel everybody has a responsibility to children or anyone that can't stand up for themselves. Anybody that needs help, the best thing you can do, do something. My name is Marisa Rosales. I'm a social worker and I'm a lowrider role model.